Next on Meet the Farmer TV, the University of Virginia's Community Garden Corn Fest. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21, helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia, and In the Kitchen Magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food. Now let's hear from some of the community garden managers. My name is Sarah Teaster and I am the garden manager for the 2010-2011 school year. I'm a second year in the Urban and Environmental Planning Department in the Architecture School here at UVA. And today you're visiting our first annual Corn Fest. Um, we are celebrating our fall harvest and trying to promote the garden and get students who may never have come to the garden before to come out today and share in our, our harvest and, and enjoy some corn. We have some really exciting things planned for the day. Um, we have some corn games and uh, corn food and corn pudding and corn bread and lots of other wonderful dishes. We're also going to be having some live music and really trying to just get the word out about what we do here. And uh, this is our community garden. And we've been around since the spring of um, 2009. Um, so we are sort of still in the new phase, um, but we have a lot going on, a lot of exciting things this past summer we got an additional 5,000 square feet about a block down the road. So we are certainly excited about that and we're gonna need the extra hands this spring uh, to plant that and harvest. We were trying to have some corn themed events um, and right here we have some people playing cornhole. Which is where you try and throw a bean bag into the hole quite fun. They look a little unsuccessful at the moment. Um, and then on our table, some corn dishes that we have. We have some corn pudding from uh, family members in North Carolina. We have some Mexican cornbread, some uh, regular creamy cornbread, and we also have some special butters that we made from products in the garden. We have a basil lemon butter that we made from harvested basil from the uh, community garden, and you can apply that to your corn uh, once it's done on the grill. And today we're actually using um, corn from the Shenandoah Valley. Um, our corn came in about two weeks ago and unfortunately our harvest this year was not what we wanted. Um, the drought and the heat for all farmers in Central Virginia has been very difficult. Um, so we actually were able to get our corn from horse and buggy produce from the Shenandoah Valley. So we're very appreciative about that. We were able to enjoy some corn about two weeks ago and a lot of our volunteers took some home and, it, and we ate it right as soon as we shucked it and it was delicious. Um, and we are waiting on some strawberry popcorn to arrive uh, hopefully at the end of next week. And as the drought has approached, we certainly have been using a lot of the water out of our cistern, which we received this year. It's a 550 gallon cistern, um, and we actually had to have it filled this week because of the drought. It's been so low. Um, so our plants have been very thirsty, but we've trying to keep on top of that. Right now, and it, we're so appreciative of our cistern, and we are actually looking to have some students design a pump for it. Uh, we, it's great water capacity, but it has no water pressure. So we're hoping that uh, some of our engineering friends can either design a solar powered pump or maybe a bike powered pump. So one uh, garden volunteer would get on the bike and, and the other one would water. So it would be a really great system and very sustainable as well. Um, this year we're also hoping to get some rotating compost bins, um, either donated or from funds uh, for the garden. And we are, we'll be making our cold frames for season extension in about two weeks. Um, and we're very excited with a lot of the programs we're doing. We really want to do some canning classes and some jam classes and some cooking classes throughout the year and in the cold months we expect to have some maybe some special guest speakers and some lecture series and perhaps some film as well. Um, the sign was actually uh, being on this campus, uh, there's a lot of uh, restrictions with signage and um, things like that. And so there were some discussions before my tenure about what the sign should say. And it does say student garden, and it is a student-run garden. But we also, we prefer to call it the community garden because we so depend on the support of the community. And we want people to just walk by and be able to stop and help us in the garden as well. Um, we've reached out to people at the Monticello Heritage Harvest Festival last week, and we actually found some 
parishioners at the Catholic Church down the road that said that they were going to stop and come for our work days and that's really what we want is to sort of invite the community in and not have the university be an isolated part of the community. Some of our compost, um, it does come from Panorama Farms um, and some that is actually from an initiative from the students, I believe Green Grounds did that and they actually compost a lot of food waste from the cafeteria and Panorama turns it into compost and then they bring it back here. So it is sort of a cyclical, we'd like to keep it all in the garden though. We'd certainly like help from the community with lecture series uh, classes. Um, we had uh, Daniel who does jam uh, by Dan and he actually did a canning and jam session with us last year. We've also had some local churches donate their kitchen space for us to do classes in and those are really the types of things we're looking for um, to really make this an educational experience so that people can learn how to preserve food and eat their local food and make uh, the seasons last a lot longer. As far as types of classes that we'd like to know, um, food pairings, um, s ways to cook seasonal food. I think we have, we had okra this year and I know that a lot of our volunteers have been hesitant to take it home. And I think it's because the the cooking factor, they're just a little bit unsure about how to cook different things. And if there's people out there with knowledge about how to cook local food, we certainly would love to have some classes about that. And just any kind kind of things that will extend our uh, the life of our products here, whether that be jamming or canning or any kind of preserving. We'd certainly love to learn how to do that. Well, for me personally, the reason that eating local is, is so important, um, I spent a lot of time in between my educational experiences working in the food industry. I've worked on local organic farms. I owned my own food business. I worked in a vineyard. I worked at a local gourmet food shop. I waited tables, catering. So I sort of got to experience the food system from all aspects. Um, and I really think that the infrastructure is here and the desire is here in Central Virginia to really increase our local food system and this uh, community garden is just a small part of that and really that's one of my focuses and hope will be a career path is uh, getting gardens in schools across America. The UVA Community Garden is a great example of how people could do this in their perhaps college campuses or their schools. Um, it's really done on a volunteer basis and people are so eager to come out and volunteer and I think that's really surprising to a lot of people. They think it might be too much work to have a garden in their school but people are so eager and the students a lot of them really don't have any experience with it and you can just see the joy and excitement when they understand and harvest produce and, and get excited about that. I, I've taught garden classes for preschool children as well and I think that the enthusiasm is the exact same for college age students. Well certainly it's very exciting the Childhood Nutrition Reauthorization Act um, will hopefully be passed through uh, Congress this this year this season and that's going to provide funding for uh, better school lunches procurement of fo local foods for schools so that they can actually buy and purchase local foods for their schools and also to provide funding for garden programs. So I really hope that, that, that this and other gardens and people across the country that have been doing school gardens will be an example and as this funding becomes available people will have models like our community garden to look to for examples. I think that gardens have especially become important in school systems because our, our children are facing some health risks right now. Um, we have a large incidence of um, obesity, of diabetes, of, of very sedentary lifestyles and I, and I think that that's very sad and having the garden not only provides healthy food but it also provides an outdoor activity, a way to connect with nature um, and of course as you see today a way to engage your community. What else is important to me by having the garden, and I think I mentioned a few moments ago about having cooking classes, I think that that's something that's really important for our young people too. A lot of people have grown up with uh, you know, two working parents. A lot of times dinner time has, has become fast food and unfortunately it's just a fact of our culture and I think a lot of our food traditions and the way that we cook and prepare, prepare food have been lost. So I certainly hope that we can at least and on a small level pass along some, um, some food heritage traditions for, for these people. You can of course Facebook us on um, Facebook and you can just uh, type in UVA Community Garden and friend us and you can get updates about what's going on in the garden and, um, and see pictures of our progress. Well that was interesting. Let's find out some more about that. 
Uh, my name is Michelle Ramey. I'm a fourth year UVA student and I'm one of the student managers of the UVA Community Garden. Today is our first annual corn festival and it's really just a chance. We, we're trying every month to just have a community potluck where people can just come out and eat food and enjoy each other's company and um, it's just it's a really wonderful beautiful evening and it's just so wonderful to see a lot of new faces like people that I've never seen before and just to see people eating and enjoying enjoying this beautiful afternoon. Yeah, if people want more information about the garden, how to come and volunteer when we're having events, um, our website is www.uvagarden.wordpress.com. And there, we, it's basically a blog where we keep updated, you know, just updates in the garden, what's growing, you know, when we have work days. Um, so it's definitely in all of our contact information. Um, the corn was just, you know, it's September, it's, it's kind of, it's a very harvest, harvesty month where there's just such an abundance and we just felt, you know, every month we're trying to have a potluck and each month has a theme and so we thought that corn would be a good theme for September. And it's delicious and it's good in so many ways. There's cornbread, there's grilled corn, there's raw corn, there's, um, it gets in your teeth a little bit. That's always a problem. You got to ask if there's food in your teeth, but um, it's worth it. <laughs> I think any way that we re can partner with other organizations and gardens, especially other community gardens in Charlottesville, um, we've met a lot of, of people who really want to start up community gardens and they're, they're kind of just want a place to start or need a resource and so we would really love, since we kind of have our feet in the ground now, um, we'd love to be a resource for, for a community garden, you know, no matter how small, whether it's for, you know, a middle school or if it's just for like a couple of families, we'd really love to be a resource for for those folks to come out and, and get some advice. We would really love um, any chance that we can have students using this garden as, as a place where they can do implementable projects or do research about something that inspires them. I think that's the wonderful thing about the garden is that it's outside of the traditional confines of the classroom and so you really have a chance to, to, to dig in and get your hands dirty and I think that's when students get inspired and, and they're excited to learn to try new things. Just now on the UVA website, because the garden was started by a student council initiative, um, student council is actually helping us create a really awesome web page. And so people can connect to us, because our WordPress site is just kind of its own entity. But now, um, thanks to student council, people can find out about us from the, the main UVA website. I think that the wonderful thing about the garden is that the way that most people find out about it is, is, is through friends or through just kind of, it's like a grassroots um, I don't know if movement, but it's just people find out about it, not necessarily from, you know, Facebook or online, but I mean, obviously people can find, you know, get more information there, but I think it's really wonderful that a lot of people here are here because they know someone who's involved with the garden in some way, and it's just um, that connection of the community is really special. I think one thing that we could really use more of is, is definitely additional funding. We would really love to be able to, um, especially during the summer, to, to really know that we would have the funds for to have a student or a couple students stay and work here this summer. Um, I actually w r received funding from the planning department and it enabled me to stay here and live here this summer and to work in the garden and that was a wonderful thing and so to be able to continue that which um, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll have those that in years previous, but to be able to have the funds to, to really have steady um, managers that will really help to keep this garden going for years and years to come. Um, the planning department was really essential to this, um, to making this garden ha happen. Tim Beatley um, was really just one of our biggest supporters from the very, very beginning, and so he and all the planning department have really been wonderful. Um, and we would definitely really love to reach out more to like environmental science and biology and engineering. We actually had um, one of our projects was engineering students made our cistern off of the astronomy building which is right um, next door to the garden. And so um, those are definitely other departments um, that we've um, reached out to. But you know it could be anything. We, could, we would love to have some art students come in and build some art pieces here or maybe have a poetry reading. So the possibilities are definitely endless. What I really love about this garden is just how how peaceful it is. You're, you were right at this corner of a very busy intersection, but for, there's just something about when you walk in, it just you feel like you're in a very calming and just like a very special place. And just seeing all of the people that are here and brought together um, through this place, through a couple of raised beds in the ground and seeds that we grew, it's 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 a really wonderful thing. A couple of new projects that we're just starting that we're really excited about. Um, Tim Beatley actually gave us a worm composting bin, which we're really excited about, um, just to add another 
um, experiment basically to our to our garden and we're also um, making our own compost tea we just bought all the materials you know we compost tea is really expensive it's basically this really highly nutritious um, you know liquid compost that you can spray and it's just really wonderful but it's really expensive so we being very do-it-yourself gardeners um, decided that we would make our own compost tea so um, hopefully in the next couple weeks we'll be able to make that happen. So we're, really, we're planning on doing um, a community potluck every month and so October, we're thinking the end of October will be um, just another like harvest theme, maybe Halloween or something like that. Um, probably in November we'll have a little Thanksgiving themed, uh, themed potluck and so definitely look forward to our once a month um, get togethers. Now let's find out more about this process from a student of permaculture. I'm Luis Oyola. I like to help out with the garden as much as I can. Like I prepare beds and sow seeds and and uh, like make, uh, clear out the clear out the the weeds and like uh, plan about the planting and all that. I do like to like teach people as much as I can about garden techniques and um, and like wh whatever chance I get, I like to sprinkle some facts about like this or that plant or that that kind of stuff. Uh, a little bit in my, we had a small garden in my, me and my family, um, but most of it has come through me learning about permaculture, um, which is this whole idea of a, like more holistic and sustainable type of gardening. Permaculture is this form of design that, that focuses on, uh, um, for me, it, it focuses on uh, mimicking a lot of natural patterns, especially like in the forest of uh, recycling and keeping things sustainable in like a closed loop system where all the nutrients that go in stay in as opposed to a lot of things coming out as pollutants and things like that. They even use permaculture to clean up um, areas like uh, in uh, for, for petroleum even they, they use mushrooms to break down the the um, what's the term for those uh, they, they, they just use the mushrooms to break down the petroleum um, and it's just a wonderful thing about using nature to clean up after ourselves. <laughs> now let's find out what he's going to do with this information he learns here in Charlottesville when he goes back to Puerto Rico. For example, one of the reasons I like to work with the garden is like this broader perspective of how do we use agriculture to deal with a lot of present social issues. Like, for example, like when I when I graduate, I actually want to go back to Puerto Rico and work with urban agriculture, just the way of like how we ca how can we feed ourselves within these very dense, very very um, very full of concrete, like very developed areas, and so people can like live more autonomously and. Um, and depend more on their community rather than some outside source. Well, I'm studying environmental science, specifically ecology, but outside I'm studying the permaculture and all, this, all these forms of uh, sustainable agriculture that are more holistic. And, um, and so when I go back, I want to work with communities and work with people who are already working with permaculture and, and look at how we can do it in the urban areas. Because there's already a lot of work doing in the rural areas, but it's kind of separated from like this huge chunk of the population who rely a lot on fast food and rely a lot of uh, imported food. And so we got to look at ways to make it truly local and take sustainability to like the true true definition of the word. This event is is all about corn and uh, corn shucking as a form of celebration. Um, and corn, I mean. Corn has been used in so many ways. My friend over there wants to use some of the corn for making a pipe. Um, but here in the, in the dining hall, they use it for cutlery and things like that. And it's just the many ways we can use all these, all this byproduct for nature. And that we, so we don't have to rely on these, on like petroleum and um, all this fossil fuels and things like that. Well, broader from the, from the garden is this sense of creating autonomy as opposed to dependence, um, especially in a place like Puerto Rico that depends a lot on the U.S. Uh, looking at ways for Puerto Ricans to have a sense of identity that isn't tied on like something superficial, but on the land, on what we grow, like on our fruit trees and our native, um, and our native agriculture, you know? Um, and so I look for ways on a broader way, like building a history based on that, on autonomy and, uh, and self-dependence. Yeah, it goes back to like this whole idea of uh, uh, a food system based on your community. Um, so 
where as opposed to relying on most of your food from outside, which actually in the long run is very, very harmful to the environment, as we have seen. Um, it's more based on what we can do locally and how we can work with the patterns that the ecology has on the local spectrum. Hey, I'm Sheffield Hale. I'm a third year undergrad student um, and I'm double majoring in environmental science and environmental thought and practice. Uh, and I'm the undergrad rep on the President's Committee for Sustainability. Its objective is to look at the university and see ways that it can uh, become more sustainable um, from a very holistic standpoint. Yes, there's some uh, biodegradable products in the dining halls made from corn. And um, they're, yeah, they're used because they help reduce waste from the dining halls. Um, this initiative right now, the Corn Fest, is a fantastic one. Great community building, um, people from all over, not just students coming, having a great time. And I think these kind of initiatives would be great if they're continued. Um, and I have you know, complete confidence that they will be. Yeah, the Food Collaborative is great. Um, really came together um, last year, and I, I came in just at the end. I'm um, just because I was interested in seeing what was going on. And uh, I haven't done a whole lot. I'm working on a project called the EVA Green Challenge. Um, and so where the tie-in came is the Green Challenge is a seven-phase initiative to try and encourage students to be more sustainable. Um, the first phase is food. And so naturally, we worked with the Food Collaborative on you know, getting ideas and um, promoting. You know, I would help promote their events through my phase. Um, and they also posted an article of mine on their website. Um, and so it's just, it's just a great relationship. And it, and then everything um, comes together. I'm just really loving my time here and loving being involved with what I'm involved with and being around the people I'm around. And um, you know, this is a great example of that. Um, great evening, great food, and then you know, most of all, a bunch of really passionate people coming together around a cool issue. Now let's hear from the food service provider, Aramark. I'm Kendall Singleton. Um, and I work for UVA Dining Services as the sustainability coordinator for dining. Yeah, so like you mentioned, the, the cornstarch, biodegradable materials, we've kind of been moving towards um, looking into a lot of waste reduction efforts over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, it's sort of good for the environment, good fiscally, uh, good. it's just a win-win for everybody and everything. Um, so we have been um, experimenting with some biodegradable dishware and cutlery and things like that. But we're also at the same time um, trying to promote waste reduction kind of overall. So as of last year, last fall actually, we introduced a new reusable to-go container program. So students can forego the biodegradable container altogether and actually get a reusable container that's dishwasher safe. They return the dirty one to us. We wash it, run it through our industrial strength dishwasher, and uh, then they get a clean container for their next use. We're so fortunate to have the local food hub in our area. And you know, luckily, that, that kind of takes care of a lot of the logistical issues that we would have um, taking our time to get on the phone with a single farmer, work out deliveries, you know, fitting uh, the small farmer's truck in with the Cisco truck and the loading dock. All those things are really big challenges, but when we have something like the local food hub, um, they're basically already in place to aggregate those smaller farmers that we want to be purchasing from locally. Uh, so we've been buying from them uh, this year, actually, this season, I guess. And just yesterday, over in the Newcomb Dining Hall, the main dining hall on Central Grounds, um, we actually had a make it a local lunch. So it was just a locally themed lunch at one of the stations. And all of the produce at that station came from the food hub. So it was almost completely local. Was it first to disappear or not? <laughs> it was pretty popular. I, I went over there and gave it a try, and I actually saw a couple of people um, at the dining hall who had never been to Newcomb before, and they were so intrigued by that concept that they decided to go give it a try. These were some staff members, actually, from UVA. So not even students, but the staff is also really excited and enthusiastic about this stuff, too. Well, there's lots of reasons, but I guess if we're thinking... Um, why is local food important? Um, I would say, really, this is sort of speaking personally, why I ultimately got interested in local food was because it became a source of community for me. You know, it's not just about supporting our local economy and supporting our local farmers, but it's also about making those connections and using uh, this sort of new infrastructure as a relationship building tool and a community building tool and you know supporting one another 
kind of all together. They try and put together seasonal menus when appropriate. So kind of taking advantage of the, the Virginia bounty that we have, especially at this time of year. It's kind of a no-brainer. Um, and so, yeah, they're, they're doing lots of great things. One thing that we just rolled out this fall that I guess we can look forward to expanding and improving upon in the coming months and years is uh, the addition of a new meat-free Monday station in all the three residential dining halls, uh, which obviously, like the name sounds like, uh, on Mondays, there is one station in each dining hall uh, that normally serves meat uh, that actually goes meat-free on that day and that is actually in addition to the station at each dining hall that is already all the time 100 uh, percent vegan and or vegetarian so we're just kind of giving students more options and that's the meat free monday station is a really great way for us to actually link together uh, and sort of find the parallels between um, sustainable dining, sustainability, environmental sustainability and nutrition and so we're really kind of going with this theory, this campaign of healthy people, healthy planet, and uh, really kind of showing the links between those two. And so I'm really, really excited actually to uh, collaborate further with our nutritionist and kind of get the ball rolling even more on, on those kinds of things. Even a small change, even reducing your meat consumption one day a week, really can have this big ripple effect. And when we think about how many students there are at UVA, and just how many undergrads can potentially uh, make this sort of lifestyle change, even again, just one day a week, the effects start to add up. Just one quick plug, I guess, for a brand new group that just came on ground uh, last semester. It's called the UVA Food Collaborative, and um, hopefully you'll be hearing more about it in the coming months. It is a group that is composed of students and staff members and faculty members from the entire UVA community, so it spans departments and disciplines and schools. Um, and the idea is not only to bring together the people on grounds that are working on issues of sustainable agriculture or teaching classes about sustainability um, or doing their own personal research on these issues. Um, so first starters, we want to get people kind of together and out of their silos and make sure that we're all internal resources for each other. But we also really want to be an educational tool for the greater Charlottesville community. So we have an event coming up October 7th. Um, it's sort of our very first introduction, you know, public coming out uh, event, I guess you could say, um, over at the brand new LEED certified Jefferson Scholars Building. And um, it is going to be a public forum and panel on local food and the media. So it'll be featuring a couple of really preeminent journalists and writers and thinkers on these issues. We've got um, the food editor of grist.org, Tom Philpott, um, a New York Times uh, journalist, Marion Burroughs, author of several cookbooks. And then we also have James McWilliams, who is a regular contributor to a couple of online publications like Slate, The Atlantic, Monthly, as well as the author of a book called Just Food. So definitely don't want to miss it. 4 p.m. Thursday, October 7th. I'm Michael Clark, your host for Meet the Farmer TV, thanking you for joining us for UVA's Community Garden Corn Fest. And we hope to see you at UVA's Local Food Collaborative event, October 7th. Next on Meet the Farmer TV, let's check out a solar winery right here in Central Virginia. Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melly Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design. Culpepper's Channel 21, helping to preserve the agricultural history of Virginia, and In the Kitchen Magazine, serving the community and everyone who loves good food.